from Washington. This is VOA News. An end to Syria peace talks with no progress. Indonesia begins to recover from its last volcano eruption. I'm Vincent Bruce reporting from Washington. Syria's main opposition group says peace talks with the government have hit a dead end after days of talks in Geneva without any breakthroughs. Opposition spokesman Louis Safi. The regime has not submitted any other proposal for, you know, about transition to democratic practice away from dictatorship, away from bloodshed, away from imposition of, 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 uh, of, of the people in power on the population. Syrian Deputy Foreign Minister Fasai Mikdad said the opposition has an unrealistic agenda. The opposition wants to discuss setting up a transitional government that would likely exclude President Bashar al-Assad the government says the focus must be fighting terrorism. Damascus uses the word terrorists when talking about the rebels. Indonesian President Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono has declared a state of emergency on the main island of Java because of a major volcano eruption. Mount Kelud erupted late Thursday, sending a cloud of ash 30 kilometers into the sky. The eruption killed 30 people and forced 100,000 to evacuate their homes. More on these stories at voanews.com. Pakistan ended a second formal round of talks Friday with Taliban insurgents with a warning that continued violence in the country threatens the peace dialogue. VOA Sharon Bain has a report from Islamabad. It was a short meeting behind closed doors that ended with a clear statement from the government. The Taliban had to end its attacks or the peace talks would suffer. The government negotiating team was referring to a spate of bombings in the southern city of Karachi that has left at least a dozen dead and more injured. In a joint statement released after the meeting, the Taliban said it regretted the violence, but added the government should also immediately stop all its anti-terrorist operations. Previous peace pacts with the insurgents have failed. Sharon Bain, VOA News, Islamabad. The last of a wave of snowstorms is expected to pass through the eastern United States Friday and Saturday after the biggest snowfall yet in an exceptionally harsh winter. At least 18 deaths were attributed to storms in the southeast and east, including that of a pregnant woman whose car was hit by a snowplow. Her baby was delivered in critical condition. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon is urging the international community to intensify efforts to help the people of the Central African Republic. France announced Friday it would temporarily send an increase of its troop presence in the CAR. VOA's Margaret Bashir has more from the United Nations. Intercommunal attacks and reprisals by mostly Muslim Selica fighters and largely Christian Antibalika fighters have killed thousands and left nearly one million people displaced or as refugees in neighboring countries. The sectarian nature of the violence in a country that had previously not seen open religious tensions has been of particular concern. The African Union has deployed about 5,000 peacekeepers to the country, assisted by a force of 1,600 from France. Paris announced Friday it would temporarily increase its force by an additional 400 troops and police. It is becoming more likely that the United Nations will take over the African-led mission in the coming months. On Friday, UN Chief Ban Ki-moon said he would return to the Council on Tuesday with his recommendations for containing and ending the crisis. Margaret Bashir, VOA News, the United Nations. Japan's Yuzuru Hanyu Friday became the first Asian to win the men's Olympic figure skating title at the Sochi Games. The medalists had flawed performances that included crash landings, but Hanyu held on largely because of his 3.93 point lead after Thursday's short program. Earlier, athletes from Switzerland and Belarus each captured their second gold medals. Switzerland's Dario Colonna skiing in short sleeves on a warm day in Sochi was outstanding in the men's cross-country 15-kilometer classic. 
In the women's individual 15-kilometer biathlon, Darya Domracheva of Belarus finished first with a dominant showing of her own. Valentine's Day, known around the world as the Day of Love, is officially here. Pope Francis marked the 14th of February celebration in St. Peter's Square with a question and answer session with thousands of couples engaged to be married. Valentine's Day is not just limited to romance. Many around the world are expressing their love and affection to family and friends, too. Visit us at voanews.com 24 hours a day for these and other stories. I'm Vincent Bruce, VOA News, reporting from Washington.